So what are the five best monthly dividend paying dividend ETFs? There are a lot of dividend ETFs out there, a lot of great ones actually, but most of them do pay dividends either quarterly, annually, or semi-annually. And some dividend cash flow investors out there might find it difficult to find the right monthly paying dividend ETFs. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my five favorite monthly paying dividend ETFs. We're gonna look at why I like these specific ETFs. And as customary, at the end, I will share with you my own personal spreadsheet based on these five investments and how they've performed against each other since April of 2019. <laughs> These are in no particular order, by the way, but let's hit it off here with number one, the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. Ticker symbol is D-I-V-O. This ETF was launched in December of 2016. They focus on high quality dividend oriented stocks along with a covered call strategy on individual stocks in the portfolio. They pay their dividends monthly, as you can see right here. Current distribution rate is 4.70%, though this is based as of May 31st, 2022. Current price per share is $33.01 as of June 16th. Now, Devo is a little bit unique because it focuses on much fewer holdings than the majority of the dividend ETFs out there. In fact, if we look here, we can see there's only 25 different holdings. The top one is United Health Group, right here at 5.72%. Then we've got Chevron, McDonald's, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, lots of household names that we know, all the way down to right down here at the end, Verizon Communications, VZ, with 1.59% of the net assets. And then you can see the specific options that they have in the portfolio. We have McDonald's, a call option here, we have a Chevron call option here, and then we have an Apple call option right here. Now here is Devo's selection methodology. In other words, how do they pick their stocks? They own high quality large cap companies, but are focused on ones that have historic dividend and earnings growth. They do their best to allocate the sectors as, as balanced as possible. They focus on, like I said, around 20 to 25 different stocks, and they have tactical covered call writing. So as opposed to something like Global X, you know, QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, where it's very straightforward, they're always writing call options at the money every single month against an index. Here we have much more tactical based on whatever the market is doing, they adjust their covered call strategy. Here's the sector by sector breakdown. You can see right here, 18.5% information technology. We've got 10% industrials, 11% healthcare, 11% consumer discretionary. 16% in financials, 7% consumer staples, 9.4% energy, and then the rest are, are smaller than that. For full awareness here, we do have an expense ratio with all of these investments. And for Devo, we have an expense ratio annually of 0.55%. All right, second investment on the list here is from Global X, and that is the Global X S&P 500 covered call ETF, ticker symbol XYLD. Now, as opposed to Devo, where there was a covered call strategy, but it was very much a smaller portion of the overall strategy, with XYLD, it is very much a central focus of the strategy. There's two big elements to XYLD. The first is they own all of the investments in the S&P 500, all 500 of them. And then above and beyond that, they then sell at the money call options against the S&P 500 index. As it says right here, XYLD seeks to generate income through covered call writing, which historically produces higher yields in periods of volatility. And like mentioned before with the others, it pays monthly distributions. And they make it very straightforward with their option execution here. They write call options on the S&P 500 index, not on individual dividend stocks. Their expense ratio is just a little bit higher than Devo at 0.60%. Here are the number of holdings, 505, because they hold the S&P 500, every individual stock. Now, because of this call option strategy, they have a very high distribution yield. 12.74%, which is almost triple what Devo was. And you can see these top holdings here, which definitely mirror the S&P 500. And it's weighted in the same fashion. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla, in the same net asset percentages. Now, I like XYLD because of the high option premium that we receive, and as a result, the high dividend yield we get. The reason why I chose XYLD over QYLD is because the price stability is just a little bit more present there, and if we're owning monthly dividend and ETFs, and we're trying to live off of the dividends, and we can capture a lot of cash flow from this investment, I would say that most investors would probably take that over the a little bit higher dividend yield you get from QYLD. Not everybody, of course, and I own QYLD in my own portfolio, but for the sake of this review, I went with XYLD. All right, number three on the list here is the Wisdom Tree US High Dividend Fund. Ticker symbol is DAH. 
DHS. Now DHS focuses their investments on the Wisdom Tree US High Dividend Index, and we can look at that methodology right here. They're comprised of the highest yielding companies within the dividend index. On the screening date, they look at companies with certain market capitalizations and they find the highest dividend yieldings, dividend stocks. Now they have 315 different dividend stocks in this ETF. You'll notice here, if we look at the actual individual holdings though, they are very much weighted heavily in some specific dividend stocks. Here we got ExxonMobil at 7.89% currently, though there has been a run up in the most recent month or two. Then we've got Chevron at 5.62%. So the top 12% of the portfolio of this specific ETF is based on energy and two specific dividend stocks. Then we've got Philip Morris, Pfizer, Coca-Cola, AbbVie, Verizon, Altria Group, Merck and Company, Bristol Myers Squibb. If we look at the sector breakdown, we'll notice we're very heavy in energy at 20%. We're at healthcare at 19%. Then 17% consumer staples, 13% financials, and 11 or essentially 12% utilities. But every other sector is very small other than that. Now for this high yield fund, the current distribution yield is 4.08%. It has an expense ratio of 0.38%. This one does not have any options writing strategy, so you're gonna find that the dividend yield is a little bit lower than the others. But what it does do is it gives us more exposure to certain sectors of the economy that we don't get as much with, with the other investments. And it's focused on just high yield dividend stocks. Now I like DHS because it has that wide array of different dividend stocks that are high yield dividend stocks and it doesn't have the option strategy like the others do and it pays monthly dividends. All right, number four on the list is one we just recently talked about on the channel and that is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. J-E-P-I. Now I'm not gonna go into full detail on this one because I just did that in another video. So I'm gonna give you some high level details on J-E-P-I and if you wanna learn more about what that fund looks like, you can check out that other video. JEPI's big focus is consistent income, but with lower volatility. Specifically, they try to factor in less volatility than the S&P 500. Current price per share is $52.87 per share and that's as of June 16th, and it's got an expense ratio of 0.35%. JEPI's big focus is they do utilize options in their strategy, but they do it in a much more proprietary way. They utilize these equity linked notes or ELNs as part of the portfolio that include the options strategies. And they make up the, the largest portion of the portfolio here, right around, I think it's less than 20% based on the rules of the ETF. Then we have individual dividend stocks that are owned in the portfolio. Some of the top holdings here, Progressive, Bristol Myers Squibb, AV and Coca-Cola. They're also relatively balanced on their sector exposure. We've got 11% in consumer staples, 10% financials, 12% healthcare, 11% industrials, 11% information technology. This 15% here is those equity linked notes. Specifically, JEPI has 116 different holdings and it's got a dividend yield currently of 9.49%. The big reason why I like JEPI and I included it in this list here is just based on the actual performance, which we'll look at. It's got that strong dividend yield where it's also got that proprietary option writing strategy that it's hard to learn more about, but the results speak for themselves. JEPI performs well. All right, and last on the list here, we have from GlobalX again, the Russell 2000 Covered Call ETF. Ticker symbol R-Y-L-D. Now maybe it's blasphemy to use two from Global X here, specifically two with such significant option writing strategies, but the results speak for themselves. With RYLD, we get just as good a dividend yield as we get with QYLD, but we have a little bit stronger price stability than we did with QYLD. In the same manner as XYLD, which focused on the S&P 500, and with RYLD focusing on the Russell 2000, they generate income, significant amount of income through covered call writing in the same strategy. They own a Russell 2000 ETF and then they write at the money call options on the Russell 2000. And they make monthly distributions for income. Net expense ratio is the same at 0.60%. And their current dividend yield is 12.82%. They actually used to only hold this Vanguard Russell 2000 ETF. However, that makes up 47% of, of the actual holdings now. And they actually invest the rest of those assets in individual stocks from that Russell 2000 ETF. So we've got a little bit of a mix here between these different types of dividend ETFs that pay monthly dividends. We've got some that are heavily focused on covered call writing with XYLD and RYLD. We've got some that have a mixture there with JEPI 
and with Devo. And then we also have DHS, which just focuses just on a whole lot of high yield dividend stocks. So let's take a look here now at a custom spreadsheet I created to see just how they performed against each other over the time period that we can actually see them all together, which is April of 2019 through the present day. And we'll look at both reinvested dividends, not reinvested dividends, and we'll look at that dividend income over that time frame. All right, so here's our portfolio balance, April 2019 to present, reinvesting all dividends. We've got all five of our investments. And really what I wanted to just talk about here is the fact that, you know, if we're reinvesting dividends, we're not living off of the cash flow yet. So this might be what the portfolio might perform on if you are tr in the getting ready to transition to living off the dividends, but you're not doing so yet because in this situation, we are reinvesting all of those dividends back into the underlying investment. If we were utilizing a model portfolio with starting at $100,000 in April of 2019, you can see that for the most part, they're very much, very similar to each other. They all drop heavily due to the COVID crash here in March, April, 2020. Out of that, we see that the top performing investment was Devo by far over the rest of them. We've got Jeppy and we've got RYLD that very much tracked very close to each other for the majority of that time frame here, where Jeppy was in second place at the end. Then we've got right here, XYLD in yellow, which ended up being in last place here when reinvesting dividends. And then also right here near the bottom, we have DHS, which struggled to come back like the others did right here when reinvesting dividends, but we'll see a different result here if we're not reinvesting dividends. Let's transition to that. Here's the same portfolio, but we're not reinvesting dividends. And you'll notice here that the top portfolio at the end here was Devo. DHS was right here near the top with Devo, where, and these are the two interesting ones that don't actually fully track an index, whereas these down here, Jeppy, RYLD, and XYLD that had similar investments to the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000 did not perform as well when we were not reinvesting dividends. And here is the cumulative dividend income here when we are not reinvesting dividends, which would be most representative of we're living off of the cash flow now. We've got the top result here by far, RYLD with the dividend yield here that's over 12%, which makes sense. Then we've got Jeppy here in second place. Then we've got XYLD in third place. Then we've got down here, Devo. This is cumulative income, by the way. And then last place here, DHS. Now for full awareness, guys, I wanted to share with you what I have in my own portfolio. I own RYLD in my high yield dividend portfolio, and I don't actually own DHS, Devo, XYLD, and Jeppy at this time. I have QYLD in the, in the high yield portfolio as well, but I'm actually strongly looking at adding both Devo as well as Jeppy into the high yield dividend uh, portfolio for myself. I like all of these ETFs for different reasons, but I personally like to own individual dividend stocks, which is the primary investments in my portfolios. Make sure to leave your two cents down below in the comments. I'd love to hear what your guys' perspective on this was, which of these ETFs you own in your own portfolio, and whether you agree or disagree with these five investments, which ones did I miss, and why. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day, and please continue to stay healthy, both physically and financially. Have a good one.